welcome back to Atman Unlimited. We're doing a series on buying a CNC machine. This will be episode three. We're going to talk about some of the differences between a personal CNC machine and a vertical machining center like the one you see behind me. I see a lot of threads on forums where people inquiry about buying a personal CNC machine and then you will always inevitably get people that jump on and say, oh, they're just tinker toys, don't waste your money, don't waste your time, just buy a vertical machining center. Well, that's not really a fair assessment to say because you don't know what that person's needs are. That person may not have the space for a vertical machining center. And personal CNC machines are perfectly fine for the tasks that they've been designed for. So we really can't directly compare a vertical machining center with a personal CNC machine. It's like trying to compare apples and oranges. You just can't do it, it's not fair to do it. But what we can do is we can compare and review the features and the differences that you're going to see between a personal CNC machine and a vertical machining center like the one behind me. So the very first thing between the difference of them is what tools you're going to be able to use. So a personal CNC machine is going to have a smaller spindle. You're going to have much less horsepower than a vertical machining center. We discussed in some of our previous videos on this subject. If you want to use a large face mill, like this 3 inch face mill, if you're doing a lot of flat work, you're not going to be able to use a mill like this in a personal CNC machine. But you have to ask the question, do you need to use a tool like this? Do I need to be able to remove material as fast as this is going to be able to remove it? You more than likely can make your part just fine using a smaller tool. It will just take longer. So if you're okay using three quarter inch end mills, that's probably about the largest I would recommend on a personal CNC machine and you're okay using an inch to inch and a half, two inch style single flute uh, fly cutter, then a personal CNC machine is just fine to use. You'll be able to get good results with it. You'll be able to make good parts. They're more than accurate enough for the average person and the parts they need to make. So there's nothing wrong with a personal CNC machine. So I don't follow the people that say, oh, you need to go out and buy a vertical machining center. Another big difference between a vertical machining center and a personal CNC machine is going to be the rate of travel. A personal CNC machine typically will wrap it around 100 inches a minute. The vertical machining center behind me, its rapid rate is 400 inches a minute. And in the vertical machining center world, that's very slow. Most of the newer machines, they wrap it around 1600 to 2000 inches a minute. So they're moving very fast. To give you an idea, 400 inches a minute is approximately 6 inches per second. So this machine is going to move about this far in one second. Your personal CNC machine is about a fourth of that, so you're going to move about this far in one second. Now, that can be good or bad. If you're learning CNC machining, if you're learning programming, being able to catch a machine that runs at only 100 inches a minute is very good. If you make a mistake in your program on this machine and you have it set to rapid at 400 inches a minute, it's probably going to crash into your part before you even realize what happened. So having a personal CNC machine that moves a little bit slower is a good thing if you're learning. Having a slower machine means more machining time, so if you're going to make a lot of parts and you may need to make them fast, you're going to want a vertical machining center. Again, it's all the use case of what you need to use it for. Also in lines with are you learning or are you going to try to manufacture, a personal CNC machine is a lot easier to learn on. It's going to be more forgiving. If you do accidentally crash a personal CNC machine, chances are you're not going to do any damage to it. <clears throat> It doesn't have the mass and it doesn't have the speed to really create a lot of energy in a collision. You're not going to knock it out of alignment. This machine on the other hand, if you crash this machine in the XY axis 
at full rapid rate with one of these large tools, you're probably going to knock it out of alignment and worst case you're going to do some damage to it. So having one of these machines to learn on isn't as easy as a personal CNC machine. You're going to find yourself walking on eggshells trying to operate a machine like this if you don't have any experience with CNC machines. A vertical machining center also costs a lot more to repair and maintain than a personal CNC machine does. So if you consider the spindle costs for this machine, if you need a spindle for this machine, it's going to cost you about three to four thousand dollars. If you need to replace a spindle in your personal CNC machine, you're probably only going to be out a couple hundred bucks. Big difference in price. Personal CNC machine, ball screws or ways and slides, you're probably in the $500 range. This machine for a ball screw is $1,000. For a set of linear guides, this is a linear uh, way machine, for a set of the linear guides, it's $1,500. So there's a, quite a big disparity in price for repair. Because this is an older machine, because we're trying to compare machines that have similar values, you have to buy an older vertical machining center or else you can't compare at all you're going to have a lot more maintenance associated with the machine and you also might run into part issues. So when you're choosing which machine to buy if you go down the road of a vertical machining center, you want to make sure that you can still get parts for these machines. This is a Fidel machine. There's three or four websites that are readily available that you can still purchase a lot of the parts to repair this machine. You can't buy new parts for a lot of the things anymore, but you can buy a lot of refurbished parts. They made a lot of these machines, and there are a lot of them out there that you can use for parts. Another thing you, that you want to consider when you're selecting a vertical machining center or a personal machining center. Let's talk about the user experience between the two machines. A personal machining center is going to give you a lot better user experience. Most of the newer personal CNC machines is going to have what's called conversational programming where you can go to the machine pull up a widget or a wizard for say machining a pocket tell it where you want the pocket located and the size and depth of the pocket and it will generate the G code for you right on the machine and you'll be able to run it so you'll be able to manufacture pretty complex parts without really needing any 3D modeling or CAM software you can just go to the machine with a drawing and then do each feature of the part using their conversational programming. So that's a really nice feature to have that you're not going to get on an older vertical machining center. This machine typically doesn't even display toolpath information for you. It's just numbers. That's all you get is numbers. That leads you to have 3D modeling software. You need to know how to 3D model your parts. You need camming software, you need to cam your parts, or you have to be able to write G-code by hand, which is very difficult and time consuming once you start getting into more complex geometries. This part of it has come down in price significantly recently with Autodesk releasing Fusion 360. Fusion 360, if you're not aware of it, is a full 3D modeling package that also includes 3D cam. It has a very, very low price for a yearly subscription and it's cloud-based. So it's a wonderful software package that will allow you to get into 3D modeling and 3D CAM to operate one of these machines very cost-effectively. Before Fusion 360, you were looking at about $10,000 investment in software between a 3D modeling package and a CAM package that could generate 3D toolpaths to utilize the full capabilities of the machine behind it. I hope this provided more detail on some of the differences that you're going to see between a personal CNC machine and a vertical machining center. Each one has their place and they're designed for completely different tasks. You have to decide which machine best fits what you need to do. Our last video in this series will be part four and we're going to wrap up buying a CNC machine. Thanks for watching.